Hi everybody, welcome to another fly fish or fly tying live fly tying show here with me, Peter Driver here in Pescari Fly. I hope everyone's had a good week and everyone's having a good weekend so far. Uh, great to see so many people back on with us there. How you doing, Robert Flaherty? Jay Muir is on there as well. How are you going, Patrick Burke? Good to have you on there. Yano, Yano's on with us there as well, and Seamus. I uh, hope you're keeping well all up there in trim. Ken Toby Dunn is on with us there as well. Ken and Brendan Splan, Liam Long. Great to have everyone there. Hope everyone's having a great evening. Uh, hope everyone's had a good week, folks. Another week closer to the trout season, thank God. But we're getting there. Brian Kennedy, another week down. Exactly, Brian. Exactly. Another week down, another week closer. A couple of weeks to go, the 15th of February. The, hey, James. James Hope's on there. The lakes will open on the Corrib, and we will open on the rivers as well, um, down in Cork and some of those rivers in Cork and Limerick. David Hannaford's on there. Jim Myler. I hope everyone's keeping well. Had a good weekend. So tonight's show, folks, is all... Hey, Billy. Billy Boland. Uh, Noel is on there. Or Neil is on. Declan Noon and John Johnson. Hope everyone's keeping well. Uh, Graham Walsh. Good to have you on there. It's Graham Simon and Mark Regan. Adrian Codd. Uh, you're very welcome, Adrian. Good stuff. Kevin Myers on there as well with us from Kilkenny. How you doing, Kevin? So tonight's show is all about Adair Springs. How you doing, John and Matthews? Adair Springs and the Irish Spring Angling Fair. So I was down there during the week, had a bit of a chat with Nade and uh, done a little bit of fishing, got you some footage. Uh, <laughs> no, thanks, Graeme. You can keep it. Graeme wants to know if we want any snow. I don't, Graeme. Thanks very much. The two Welsh boys there, Nigel Haynes, Dylan Roberts, great regulars to the show. Great to have you on with us again. Stephen Potts is on there as well. Hey, you doing, Stephen from Kildare. Hope you're all keeping well. So tonight's all about Adair Springs, and we're going to talk a bit about the Irish Spring Angler Fair coming up in April. Uh, we're going to look at some fly patterns that work for me quite well in Adair, and other fisheries, of course. They don't just work in Adair, they work well in other fisheries. So we're going to talk about a couple of different fly patterns. Some will be controversial, I'm sure, to some purists and stuff like that. But look at, it's, if you're fishing banks, this is the stuff you got to fish sometimes. Hey, John Bird is on there as well. Robbie Berry, uh, John, we could, John Bird could teach us a thing or two about fishing banks. Uh, very, very accomplished angler there, John. John does well. Edward Healy's on there. Robbie Berry's on with us again. How you doing, Robbie? Hope you're well. Anthony Bolton there from Rathrum, the County Wicklow, my hometown. Good to have you on with us, Anthony. So tonight's all about that. I said we're going to have a little bit of look and a little bit of chat as well as regards um, the Irish Spring Angling Fair, folks. It's coming up on the 29th to the 30th of April. Um, it was a fantastic show last year. Ned kicked it off last year, and it's it's grown in, in to great strengths now uh, this year already. You know, bigger marquees, more more trade stands, more demonstrators, more activity on the lake. Uh, how you doing, Miles Riley? How you doing, Donald Rafferty? More activity on the lake, demonstrations. There's a whole bundle of stuff to come. Make sure you check out their website, www.irishspringanglerfair.com. Um, for updates, it's it's going to start getting very interesting soon. All the, They're starting to release all their tires and stuff. I see John Maru, uh, Maru, Maru I think is it? Uh, he was announced today. He was there last year, so... Um, He'll be back again next year. We'll be there. Pescari Fly will be there with our stand. And we will also be there with Pescari Seeing Game. Because it, of course it is angling for all. So we'll move lock, stock and barrel the whole way down there. So make sure you mark that one in your calendar folks. Great weekend last year. Great crack. One of the best shows I was ever at. Best venue. And uh, that'll be back on again this year. And we're going to do a little bit of talking about that. How are you doing Jared Murta and Tony Rooney. Great to have everyone on. So we're going to tie a few little flies. And in, in a little while... We're going to head down to Dare Springs. I shot a bit of footage down there. Tried to catch a couple of fish for you to show you what the fish is like. And uh, had a bit of a chat with Ned as well. But don't forget, folks, hit share on the stream. If you hit that share button or send in a, a bit of a hi doing Auntie Brady. Paul Jenkins is on there as well. Good to have you on, Paul. Um, if you share the stream or send in an old comment there, uh, you will be into win tonight's flies and you might get you a couple of... of uh, late season bank fish if you're in a dare springs or even leash or any of these fisheries around the country there's plenty of them around the country um the, the, these, these styles of flies will work anywhere so if you hit the share in the stream there um you can be into win these flights so we're going to start with so when i went to a dare the other day and most days when i go to there bunging is becoming a real thing okay it not becoming it has been around for quite a while okay bunging bunging worms bunging eggs all that kind of stuff and i was down there the last day and most days i compete i used to compete in a wall every year this year just i just wasn't able to make Clear up the time to compete in a wall this year. Uh, did the Leinster Banks over in Leash, all right? And and eggs and bungs and worms are are an absolute crucial. If you're going out fishing these these lakes, you've, you've got to be able to fish them. You got to have the right kind of uh, flies tied up for them. And we're going to tie a couple of these flies now. If I was setting up for a bung, but the first thing we're going to do is tie a bung. So you can buy pimps or bungs, you know, foam cylinders. You can buy different kind of stuff like that, and they can be quite effective. An awful lot of us guys, we tend to tie our own. We make our own. So we're going to just go through how you do Andy Gibb. We're going to make our own um, bung here now at the moment. And basically what I've got here in the vice is a Hannock 230 BL size 10. 
okay that's what i tend to use for a lot of my kind of still water stuff for bunging and stuff it's a really strong hook but even though it's a wet fly hook it's not that heavy of a wire um it's a really nice shape to it and it has a good strong strong wire even though it's not that heavy and i'm going to add on a little bit of black thread now bungs are easy to talk. they're not rocket science okay a couple of little things you want to be doing the same as we were talking about clinks there last week you got to be able to see the bloody things but you know they've also got to be able to fish now when you tie a bung on a hook rather than putting on one of those floaty foam things or a bubble or whatever a sticky thing you know there's a good chance to, i'm going to catch a fish on this bung like you know tie it properly put it out there properly um you know uh, there's a uh, most days a fish is going to come up and have a nosy at okay and, and plenty you can catch plenty of fish so there's loads of types of bungs out there okay the one i'm doing is just a simple foam bung that i've tied loads of times for myself i use the whole time i use the, the um, up oven foam blocks as you can see there i've been drilling some of the foam blocks from my booby eyes and then you can see over on this side here where i've been cutting my bungs out of it and on this side here i've cut more bungs out of it and um, so i use a, a blade a very sharp razor blade and i cut my bung out of this foam okay i find a fantastic foam we have loads of it in the shop there um really really good high density closed cell foam floats really well and uh, very versatile so buy a block of it and, and you know take the, the ends off it and stuff for bung so here i got a black i'm going to tie a black bung but we can tie them in any color and i would normally high mark for shirt we normally would tie them in lots of different colors because depending on the sunlight and you'll see when i'm fishing later on you know there was one part where i was really struggling now i had colored bungs up but um you know, it was fishing across silver water the way the sun was facing across the lake into me. If I'd had a black bung with me, I didn't have a black bung with me, I would have been far more successful. And plus, a dark colour bung can be can be really good. And if I'm tying a bung with white foam or pink foam or orange foam, um, Billy's there as well, so he often gets the throat taking a... a um, Neil Walker does account as a fly in fly fishing. It does, Neil, in competition. You're absolutely correct. In competitions, we are not allowed fish with anything... That's an additive to the, to the cast as such as regards the um as regards um say putting on a piece of foam on directly onto the leader a sticky foam how you do john ditch a uh, piece of sticky foam and like that our bones have to be tied on a hook okay and yes john johnson you're correct it needs to have at least three materials on the hook to count as a fly okay this is competition rules okay folks so here i've got my hook I got my materials, material number one. I'm now going to add in my foam, material number two. So I'd normally kind of guess it a little bit bigger. Normally when I tie the bungs at home, I'm just cutting off a piece of a square there, as you can see. And I'll just tidy it up where the razor blade marks were left in it. If I'm tying these up at home, I'll tie them quite large. Because the best thing about bungs is I can downsize them when I get there. Okay? So, you know, tie them up a decent size. When you get there, if the, if the you know... The wave isn't that bad. You think you'll get away with a smaller, lighter bung, which needs to be sensitive. Your bung needs to be sensitive too. Sometimes fishing a massive big bung can actually take a little bit away from your ability to see if fish are taking what's underneath it, okay? So, you know, you need them a little bit sensitive. Now, I'll often tie clink hammers and use clink hammers as bungs. Depends on the situation I am. Depends on the fishery. But like during winter bank fishing, this sort of thing is, is, is um, very efficient and very effective. Competition legal. And uh, you'll also catch a fish on it. So I'm just lashing that on there with my thread. This is Semper Fly 80 black waxed thread. Lashing it on there. <laughs> That's right, Kevin Bones, I was doing it. Andy Gibb, you know, I tell you now a story about two years ago. So all I've done is just brought me thread up further up the hook there, okay? About two years ago, Andy, I had two French men out. One of them was Dave Globefly. He, he writes for a he, he has a famous magazine, Global Magazine, and travel company over in France. And he came to the Nor to fish with me for a day and, and do a few articles on the River Nor. So I'll, once I've just done those two segments, okay, I'm going to add in my third piece of material now, which is going to be a piece of pink parapost, scary fly pink parapost, and this helps with visibility, okay. So anyway, back to the story, Dave or uh, uh, Andy. Um, we were fishing during the summer on the Nore, and, and normally the Nore is, is fairly prolific, anyone that knows it. But anyway, this one day, we couldn't buy a couple of decent trout for photographs. It was just one of them, hey Jamie, it was just one of those days where you just couldn't. And it was typically a day a, f a French magazine comes over to take an article, like two strands of that pink pink post there. And I'm just going to add that in there on that second rib. Um, typical today, two Frenchmen. But anyway, we couldn't get fish, so we went up along a couple of flats. One of the Frenchmen took out a beetle. And I'm not joking, the beetle was longer than that bung I have there. It was it was a good half times longer again. A big black foam beetle. A bung like this for all it's worth. 
few legs sticking out of the side and he went up that flat water with a real short tapered leader and he was smashing it into the flats where there was no trout rising and that beetle would get submerged slightly in, in the initial impact and as soon as it popped back up to the surface lo and behold a big trout would come out of the deeps and gollop that thing right down and only for I was standing watching him do it you wouldn't believe it it was phenomenal and the thing was I say it was a good bit longer than that than that um that, that black bung there, but looking up from the underneath, looking from the side, hi Eugene Fagan, uh, looking up from underneath, looking up the side, it was a bung. So, will Trout come up and take it? I wouldn't see why not. Hi Phil, I wouldn't see why not. So all I'm going to do is just whip finish off the underside of that. But it was one of those things where he just, he rang, myself and the Dave guy were further down river in a run, fishing a run. And the other chap, I can't think of his name now, I'll think of it in a few minutes, but um. He, he went up onto the flats to try the flats to see if we could get some trout going on the flats. And he rang David. He said, get up here quick. After getting three or four really quality fish that were a couple of pounds, like, you know, a pound, pound and a half, two pound each, up in the flats there ab above uh, Dicer in, in Thomastown. So you can see I've just trimmed in that lovely little pink post. And there's my three materials on now. And it's my cider. Okay, what I do then is I turn it over to the underside. And I get my Zappa Gap with the brush. And I'm going to just give that a nice, healthy little coat and a Zappa Gap in there. Brush, push those bristles right in around the hook to make sure that whole thing is well sealed. So anyway, the other chap rang myself and Dave. So he got up here quick after catching a couple of fish. So we motored on up. There was a high bank on the far side from the bank I was on. Dave kind of waited in beside him because he wanted to get photographs. Hi, Dominic. He surely won't, Dominic. But uh, he wanted to get a few photographs of the fish and stuff like that. See, I've got that a nice healthy little uh, coat of uh, glue in there. That'll set up and dry up in that quite nicely. And that's not going anywhere. And you will catch rainbows on that. You will catch rainbows on that, no problem. You'll see it in the silver water. The pink post helps as well. Tie them in a, a whole multitude of colours. Pinks, whites, oranges, whatever's, whatever works best for you. But um, when we went up to the French guy, anyway, and, and you know, I was watching him. I came up on the high bank to what to be kind of over him. I had enough cover and protection that I wasn't interfering with his fishing. But I could see the splash every time he made a dry fly. Now, it was, it was like a trout was rising. The splash was that much. But he was doing it on purpose. He'd shortened up his leader to about six, five or six foot. And he was really aggressively getting impact on that on that. Uh, beetles, so same as beetles were falling off all the tree cover and stuff, you know. And you want to see the trout that man took out of them flats. My God Almighty! But I say only for I saw it, you wouldn't believe it. Um, big massive black beetles. So there you go, folks. Something to test out this summer in the high summer. So there we have. That's our bung. Okay. So if I was fishing now, I'd have that on a dropper. Uh, competition legal. Also quite quite the ability to catch a couple of fish. Now if I tied a white bung or a pink bung or an orange bung. What I would often do is I turn up the hook ups upside down and I would actually colour the underside of the bung, either a brown or a black or something like that, a more natural colour that I mightn't spook the fish. Okay, if I'm fishing over rubbery fish, um, no, I haven't, Dylan, but it'll be worth trying. It'll be worth trying. Um, very much so worth trying. Great tip. Um, I'd often colour the underside of my bungs so I mightn't spook a, a, a nervous kind of fish with a white bung or a pink bung. Um, they can even sometimes they'll come up and take a for pellets if they're being fed in the place or whatever so you know tying your own bungs can be fruitful enough uh, i know the the stick iron ones and the the, the ones you twist on they're, they're very convenient because you can move them up and down unfortunately with a bung and a hook you're you're kind of limited to how many so i would often put in three droppers and i'd move my bung up and down the three droppers um and that would kind of allow me to um to investigate different depths so what i'd fish under the bung i'm going to run through these flies as quick as i can because i've got some Fishing to show you guys, and I got an interview with Nathan stuff to show you guys, and then I got a couple of more streamer patterns coming up later on. So we're just talking, um, how's it going, Wayne? All's good here too, buddy. Hope you're keeping well. So we're just talking about a few bung flies here as well. Now, another very simple but super effective fly under the moon, and you can even free line them, is egg flies. Okay, egg flies are just something that are just all over the place. Uh, all sorts of colours out there these days, all sorts of materials tied them. I keep them very simple. What I do, make sure I do, I do tie them. Um, yes, you could, Jonathan Matthews, I'm sure you could. Yeah, and use the foam cylinders from Vineyards as for the indicators. They will work fine, and I've often used them. Okay, I've often used them. They will work fine, and a bit of glow bright, just something there that you're going to be able to see. The whole thing about, you know, sometimes I leave and treat my bungs with watershed. So if you treat that with watershed, um, the night before, let it dry in. It will help with the buoyancy of that. Um, it does, Robbie, actually it does, yeah. Um, it does, the, the, the thread can, it counts as a material. So I'd often treat those in watershed the night before I go fishing. Uh, give them a good soaking in watershed, let them dry out. And that puts a nice coat, a nice protective film over that 
uh, foam and it'll help them float uh, really well for you as well like especially for small ones Jonathan it'd be worth doing so it, probably the, the the foam cylinders from Vineyards I'd give them a treat so when I'm doing eggs and when most guys are doing eggs they're using the 644 size 10 dahaku that is a really good egg hook okay I normally use size 10 I use tend to use a big a big size hook um, it is Kevin yeah and you know if you're a dry dropper on the rivers I'm not going to say I haven't fished them on rivers I have you know, especially in, in springtime and you're fishing deep, heavy water and you can't wade out, you put on a bung and put two nymphs under it, you can, you can wrestle a few trout out that way as well. Okay, so a bit of egg material, got some scary fly. I find this one has been really good lately, uh, using, a, using a bit of it. You see me using some of it later on and um, it, we call it the blueberry. It's kind of a pale black. Uh, can very, it's very good. So just a couple of turns of tread on there first again. Uh, how you do, Thomas? How's it going? A couple of turns of tread on there and I just exposed the core of the material and we'll just tie that in there like so. Trim off that. Don't come the whole way down the hook. As you can see, I've only came about a quarter quarter measure down the hook. So Kevin Maher, uh, what is watershed? I tell you, Kevin, I'll get down and have it in the shop. I'll get down and get a bottle and I'll bring it up after the break when I put it on the show and I'll talk you through watershed. Um, it's a it's a floating material. It's an additive for floating for flies, but you don't apply it to your fly directly while you're out in the river. You apply it to your fly beforehand and let it soak in, okay? Uh, very good for bungs, I find. So I'm just wrapping this up, and as you can see, every time I'm wrapping, such a simple fly as well, every time I'm wrapping, I'm stroking back those fibres, getting them all stacked nicely in behind that bead. Couple of real tight turns in behind that bead, make sure everything's nice and tight. Get your thread in there. Couple of turns off. Hey, Bessie. Hope you're keeping well, yourself and Michael. Hope he's will be down at the Adair Springs Angling Show this year. The Irish Spring Angling Show, should I say. This year, and uh, be good to catch up with you guys. Or I might see you up in uh, where do you call it? Um, basically, up in there. The, the show is on an article there. There, I think it's the 26th of February. Um, might see yourself, Michael. At we normally do meet up. Um, good question, Jamie. What's the difference between an egg, a fab, and a blob? Kind <laughs> of really getting into it there. An egg is it's tied with egg material anyway. it's a small round it's much softer than say a blob than blob material a fab would have a piece of foam sticking out of the back of it and it would be something that's fished quite deep thanks robert for that something fished quite deep and would fish from the bottom up um where an egg would be fished stagnant under a bung is probably the best way without going into too much detail and tying them all and um, we could sit here for for a month tying uh stocky flies or, or um if we were, but there's a simple egg pattern, quite simple. Will not get wet. It, it'll fucking. It will all marry together and stuff like that. And um, there's loads of colours of eggs. Um, loads of people mixing the colours and stuff like that. And you'd put, you know, one colour in behind the other and stuff. I tend to put a little bead on it. But on the six four four hook, I find very important. You're, you're going to get your hookups with that hook. You can tie them on blob hooks and stuff like that. And some people even tie them on jig hooks. I'm not. I'm, I don't find they work quite as good. The six four four was designed to be, to be the perfect egg hook. Um, so there's a simple egg, a simple bone. If you went down fishing with that egg now under that bung, and most fishers around the country, you're going to have a fair chance of getting success. Um, and it's, pro it's probably two of the most simplest flies we've ever tied. Um, there, Jim Oilers on there. You wet the egg and, and pull back towards back works as well. Thanks for that, Jim. Um, you know, two of the simplest flies we've ever tied in this show. And, and if you're on a fishery, they would be quite, quite, um, they could be quite prolific if you get the depths right. Fishing them fisheries, it's all about the depths. You get the depths right, you're 75% of the way there. Okay, so you got to get the depths. you got to keep moving the depths and get the depths right. Another handy little fly under the bone, and very good for free lining as well, is an apps. Okay, apps bloodworms, but also beaded apps. Okay, and that's what I'm going to tie here now, is a glass bead apps. This is one of the ones I've used, I use a lot, and find it really super effective. So on here, I've got some little glass beads. These are Piscari Fly uh, pearl red beads. As you can see, there's a little touch of pearl in them. They're not pure red. There's a little touch of pearl in them. Really, really nice colour. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. <coughs> really nice colour. Have you got no uh, bungs or, or eggs in your box, Richard? No. Um, really nice little bit of uh, pearl tint to those red beads. Find them super successful at the moment. Uh, the few times I have managed to get out. And in the middle there, I always like when I'm doing the glass beads, worms, is to put a single colour bead in the middle. In there, I've got a little white pearl bead, as you can see. Sometimes if I'm using the green glass beads, I put a red in the middle or something like that i like to just mix it up a little bit and put a, a separate bead in the middle so all we do is slide them up on the hook i'm on the same hook again as it was before the 230 bl um 
Brilliant, that'd be great. Yeah, it'd be, it's a great whole evening up there, Betty. That social evening up in North Clare. Uh, North Clare anglers, folks, put on a social evening every year um, in sometime it's early in the season. And everybody's welcome. It's a free of charge event. Great old evening. Bit of flight time. I'll go up in a little bit of flight time, bring a bit of gear. Jimmy Tyrrell from Irish Flightcraft comes up there and, and he does a bit. And it's a great old evening. Everyone's welcome. Uh, Jimmy Tyrrell, of course, will be at the Irish Spring Angling Fair this year. Don't, um, fantastic selection of flies he has and a great fly tire there's going to be a massive amount of fly tires at the show and again demonstrators in all disciplines I'm looking for um, there it is um, in all disciplines spinning fishing sea angling is going to be back um, course angling you know it, there's going to be a great old a great buzz around the, the Irish Spring Angling Fair this year so make sure you, you come along that weekend the 28th or 29th and 30th of April so I've just put in a little bit of um Kevlar there. Now, I'm sure there's lots of people out there that tie these glass beads in different ways. Um, that is the North Kildare social evening, Seamus. Uh, it's the North Kildare social evening. If you look up North uh, Kildare anglers, you'll see that they advertise their social evening. And it's just an evening for fly fishermen to get together and have a bit of a chat and a crack. I go up and I do a bit of flying tie and Jimmy goes up and does a bit of fly tying. Uh, Eamon Conway will be there from Tain Rods. And Eamon will also be at um, the Irish Spring Angling Fair this year as well, folks. He's a new addition to the show. Um, so all I've done there is just attached in a bit of flexi floss. This is red flexi floss, okay? Now, when I attach it in first, I just like so, two turns over top is fine. I catch my waist material and I give it a good stretch to make sure it stays as skinny as possible and I secure it in like so. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of other ways that people tie these in. This is just the way I do it, okay? Take away the waist and a couple of more turns there to make sure it's nice and smooth so those beads will slide right back up. And come back up now. I'm putting a nice bit of pressure on the thread, as you can see with my left hand. I'm supporting that hook to make sure I don't pull it out of ice. And then a whip finish. Yeah, it's the show in in, in Newbridge, uh, Robbie. Yeah, it is the show in Newbridge. You were at last year, Rob. Now I'll just trim away me Kevlar there for a minute, and I slide all my beads up there. Slide all my beads right up there, nice and tight, as you can see. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll take my I use the Tommy Fly number sixteen for the butt. And I'll create a little butt here at the back. I'll make sure I don't get caught up in those. A little wedge of thread there. Just make sure the thread is not going to slip off, but enough to give you a foundation to add other materials here. And I'll take two more strands of my red flexi floss. And again, you can do this in a, an abundance of colours, folks. You know, you've got white flexi floss, appworms, you've got... Um, now, when I tie it in this time again, I will make sure I leave waste because I'll need to be able to pull that tight keeping it in tight there right behind the bead I will secure in that flexi floss out the butt and I say there's, there's plenty of other ways that people tie this they thread up the, the flexi floss up through the the beads and all that as well I, I don't I don't find any need to do it so pull pulling my flexi floss to waist nice and tight get a good tight trim on it and tidy up in behind those beads that's not going anywhere these garret, um, these these worms, these are absolutely lethal. It depends on what way the fish want them, Garrett. Sometimes you can fish them on a fifteen foot leader on their own and just tweak them back on a fast glass or a midge tip or even a floating line, or you can fish them. I find them very effective under the bung. So if I was bung fishing these three flies now, I'd have this flexi flask worm on the point, and then what I would do is I would have um, the the egg, the black, the blueberry egg we just used. Two, two and a half foot above it, and then probably three foot above that, I'd have my bung. A little bit of zap gap in there on the boat of that. Make sure everyone's well secured in, sealed in. Uh, really, really effective, Garrett. This one and the green one are probably the two better ones, I find for myself anyway. So once I've got that bit of glue on that, that is not going anywhere. Now I want to put two legs in the middle. Couldn't be any simpler the way I do this. I take one piece of flexi floss off of this. And all I'm going to do is right in there behind that white bead. I'm going to just twist it in there and get it to sink in between the two beads. And I'm going to simply tie a knot. One knot. Give it a run back and forth. It's locked in there. Nothing's going to get in there to get that undone. And there you have your six-legged... Um, there you have your six-legged apps worms glass beads. Very, very simple. One important thing is get all your legs, stand them all up. And trim them all the same length. Okay. There you go. Sometimes I have longer ones. 
Sometimes of shorter ones. It all depends what way the fish want them. Okay. Sometimes the long ones will work for you better than short ones. And there's days when the long ones you'll find them plucking at them a bit and playing with them, and your bung is moving, but you're not getting the fish. Cut all your legs a little bit shorter. And you could actually start catching fish straight away. So um, important little thing there for that. Uh, really, really effective. Um, and Sherry is spot on. I was just about to say it, Shesh. Mullet. Mullet love appsworms. That is a cracker for mullet. If you're fishing for mullet, I'd have that up in my dropper pattern as well. As one of my droppers uh, fishing for mullet. Really good. Well done, Shesh. Thanks for that. Um, so there we have it, folks. There's a couple of little flies. I wouldn't be going to Adair Springs without so far. Uh, we're going to head over now. And we're going to have a look at me... Trying to do a bit of fishing down there. The other day, it was Baltic cold down there. There was a wind blowing in it. And uh, we all know what I might do to a brass monkey. I'm not going to say it. But um, it was freezing. But I got down there the other morning. Had a meeting up with Ned and stuff like that. And we, I managed to get a few fish. So to give you some idea of what the fishery is like. It's a beautiful fishery down there. If you haven't fished it, it's well worth the visit. Lovely banks. Really awesome quality of fish there. Um... There you go. Thanks, Graham, for that. Um, it's a really awesome fishery. And, of course, it is the venue for the Irish Spring Angling Fair this year on the 29th to 30th of um, April. So, well, let's have a little look. I'll be back in a few moments. i got two really cool streamer patterns uh, to show you after this one. Definitely ones I wouldn't be without. Um, so, stay tuned for that one. I'll be back in a few moments. Oh, and by the way, unfortunately, we don't have Dave tonight. I, I should have went, went through my little uh, to-do list here before I started. So, um we, hi to all our YouTubers for tomorrow, anyway, for starters. Great to have you all supporting us on a Sunday. Um, but Dave, is, Dave has gone out for dinner. Risa took him out for dinner tonight, so we've no Dave tonight. So Mark is going to do the quiz for us. Mark is downstairs doing a bit of work, and Mark is going to do the quiz for us tonight. Tonight we are giving away two full weekend passes to the Irish Spring Angling Fair for two persons. Okay, so two people are going to get two full passes for the entire weekend to the Irish Spring Angling Fair. Thanks a million to Ned and his team down there for giving us that great prize. Mark will be along. I don't know if he's will be sorry that Mark has taken over tonight or he will be happy. But Mark will be along there with a question after this segment. And uh, stay tuned for that one. Keep an eye out in the comment stream for that one. If anybody has any questions right and do, please shoot them across. Uh, I'm going to hand it, and we're, we're going to head down to Adair now. And I will see you back in a few moments for another bit of flight time. Enjoy. Everybody. Well, good evening, should I say? We're here. We've just landed here in the Air Springs, and uh, nice, fresh, nice, fresh January morning. We just after putting on some wick here, in case we got a shower. Even though the skies are quite clear at the moment, but uh, we're just making our way around this lovely venue here, as you can see. <clears throat> a little bit of a strong breeze there. I'm going to head around and get to the far side over here and tackle up. So there Springs is based in Moonkai in County Kilkenny. About, it was about a half an hour's drive for me, I suppose, this morning down from, from uh, Kilkenny down to Adair Springs. That'll pick up that net. They supply you with your own landing nets here as well. You don't have to bring a landing net to save. <coughs> Having to dip them and stuff, but fabulous venue. Great stocks of fish, nice clean banks. You got your stands there beside each peg, and uh, hopefully, we're going to get a couple of fish. And see the hut back up there in the car park. Lovely little log cabin there. Ned sells a bit of tackle. And did he get in over a cold wind or a bit of rain to have a cup of coffee too? Fabulous fishery. I'm just here now. Setting up two rods, one rod set up there with a fast glass intermediate with a real line in it, real fast intermediate. This here is the Acris Syndicate 10 7, put a flog line on this one, and I'm uh, gonna set this up as a bung rod or a buzzer rod, whichever I decide to start with. I might start with a bung maybe first and a few worms and eggs and uh, see if we can get an early take fish there you can see I am scooting across the top bit of activity anyway it is it's pretty chilly here now this morning folks tip it was uh, I'm choosing a bit of a show gun but I won't I'll probably go to 0.18 to start with see how we get on with that 
Of course, if it was competitions, I would have to put the bung on a hook because we're just here for a bit of pleasure. You can actually fish bungs. I'll strip off a couple of meters of that, tie it in there to the loop. Just using a blood knot. Down there about five or six foot. I make a break tying my dropper. That's the way I've always tied my droppers with double bloods. The whole thing about bunging, or even in general bank fishing, is trying to get the depth of those fish. If you can get the depth of those fish that are on, you're already halfway there. So when you're sitting up, when you're bunging, I like to try and fish maybe two dips and uh, <coughs> sort of put maybe two to three foot in between the two flies. So I'll probably start fishing at maybe two foot and five foot and then if I'm not getting any fish, I might switch over, the, I might move those um, <coughs> Move those flies to maybe three and six or something like that by just moving the bung up and down the different different areas. So we're gonna start with a little white egg. A white egg on a point. And I want these bright chitrous schneel worms here. This is new material in from Tommy Fly. We're gonna try one of those on the dropper, see how to take it. Might work, might not work, but that's the joys of a bit of bank fishing. I haven't got out to do much bank fishing now this winter. Normally I'll be out a lot more consistently, so. A bit of trial and error here this morning. Right, I'm tidy the audience up and let's go for a cast. There we have it, folks. Literally first cast. Put it into that little bit of cam water there. And the bone. Let it set for about two minute, minute and a half. Straight away on the white egg. Dropping down through the layers. We picked up our first fish. Lovely. Nice size rainbow. Nice and easy. Not too much of a there's some massive fish in this lake, folks. This is a nice. I wouldn't say a handy one, but definitely a nice easy one to start off the day with. There we go. First of the day. As you can see, nice clean white egg. All hooks are barbless. So very easy to release the fish. Take out the egg. Put them back in. Okay. Good stuff. Let's see if we can get a second one. over in that calm area. You can see there's a bit of action over there. A bit of surface movement. Put it out there, a bit of a strip there just to straighten everything. Just on the edge of that riffle. Watching that little bone. Letting the egg and the worm sink down through the layers. I'd leave it fairly stagnant, see, up to the bone. I'd leave it fairly stagnant. If I was fishing competition bones there now, I could have actually struck that. There we go, fish on. Lovely, better fish this time. I could have actually, <coughs> if I had a competition bung on there, I would have had a hook and I would have been able to possibly catch that fish. This is a better fish, much more solid. Got down deep straight away. Whether he's on the bung or the worm now, I don't know, but we'll see. Good bit of early action here. Lovely fishery here, beautiful. Beautiful clean banks, as you can see, lovely stool, mats there, keep the gear clean. You know, fabulous fisher here in the Dare Springs. And of course, the Irish Spring Angling Fair is going to be back here in May. And this whole venue will be uh, used for casting, demos, all that kind of stuff. What a fabulous venue for the Irish Spring Angling Fair. Um, you can come here, get some lessons, get some tips from some of the top anglers all across Ireland and the UK. 
we'll be here ourselves of course lock stock and barrel a big marquee set up there for tackles this guy's putting up a good account for himself this, this is possibly a good fish as you can see there's a bit of a weed bed here in front of me so i'm just trying to hold him on the outside of that shelf and not let him get his head down to that weed bed and 10 foot 7 way aquas is getting a nice bend in it <coughs> up we should get a look at our fish now shortly folks and he's actually wrapped up in the whole thing decent sized fish he's got the egg in the mouth and he's got the tail he's got the pine fly wrapped up in him there we go nice lump of a, a rainbow egg flies came out and it, the tail fly the dropper just got in behind the secure. There we go. Real beautiful looking rainbow from Adair Springs. Fine big beast of a fish. Again, the barbless hooks makes it nice and easy. Catch and release. No pressure on the fish. And away he goes. Okay, let's try that again. You can see more surface activity out there. Put it out there. Bit of a strip to straighten everything. Just on the edge of that riffle. Give it a few moments, let it drop down. So as I was saying the last time when we had the cast before we caught that fish, that you know I leave it there, let it stagnant, let it stagnant for a little while. Sometimes I give it a strip, put a little bit of movement in flies to get some attention maybe. <coughs> Everything depends on the day, the way the fish want it. Sometimes they want it absolutely stagnant. Sometimes you got to play with it, the, the bung set up a little bit. Um, you know, to get a bit of attention and, and get a bit of movement in the flies that there could be something beside it. Um, so you'd want to, you know, play around with your bunk setups, play around with your depths, obviously your fly patterns, and um, see what way the fish want it on any particular given day. Sometimes I'll cast it out and leave it out there for quite a long time and sometimes I'll fish it quite quickly. On a day like today with the wind, the way it is, uh, you can see how much that, that bung has already drifted across that little, this little kind of bay that I'm fishing here. Um, you know, I won't leave it out there too long. I'll let it come out a little bit further for no action. I'll go back into that calm spot again and look to see if there's another fish in there patrolling. Our fish on here now, folks. Ah, oh, he's gone, is he? Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. That was a decent lump now. I've been a bit heavy with him. And uh, he managed to cost me two flies as well. So, time for a reset up. It's the one thing about their springs. There's some absolute beasts in here. Let's just try back out here again. Let's see how we go. It'll be difficult enough sometimes to see that bung there, but. If I can't see the bung, I'll keep it tight line, you can see a bit of active surface activity around where the bung is. So I just switched over to the stream rod there <coughs> and just pulling it. My little olive minky, first cast, and straight into a fish. Oh, he's gone. That's okay. Let's try that again. I'm on a fast class here. Rio, fast in the media. Fire it out there, a couple of straight pulls to straighten everything up, and then I go into a figure of eight. Couple of pulls, figure of eight. Speeding up the figure of eight, slowing it down, trying to get that retrieve. Very important when you're fishing streamers to work on your retrieves. Try and get the right retrieve exactly the way the fish want it. Just a little bit of a dabble there at the end, just in case something's following it in, they might entice them to take it. A little bit of a pluck there, just following it. Sometimes you get those little plucks on minkies, you just gotta keep going. Don't strike, don't lift, don't do it until you feel the weight of that fish. A bit of a follow on that one there. Uh, 
fish here. Some lake. Back he goes. Just came up here to this lovely little peninsula up here at the top end of the lake. Over a little spot up here now. Which is one small rainbow there. On a black leech pattern. That's what we love about this lake is, you know, lovely little bays, little islands, little peninsulas. All intriguing little place to investigate. Every part of it stuffed with fish. Let's give it a go here now for another few minutes and see how we get on. Activity over there, watching around those shells and stuff. That's a nice chilly breeze, I can tell you, here today. It's the 15th of January. And you want all your winter woolies on you today. <clears throat> Still early enough in today, so.
Right, so folks, we're in here in at Air Springs, in uh, in here with Ned, Jason, and Maris, uh, three of the main organisers from the show. Thanks, lads, for coming on the show tonight and having a bit of a chat with us. Great to be able to have the trees at the one time. I know you're all busy men. Um, so this is the venue where the, the Irish Spring Angling Fair is going to be held uh, coming up. It's um, it's it's not that far away. It's something to look forward to, lads, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Twenty ninth, thirty of April. Maybank all the weekend. Maybank all the weekend. Just around the corner. Just around the corner. A bit of sunshine. Spring will be in the air. Yeah, yeah it, it'll, be, it'll be a great show. Uh, the location wise that we have here for the show, it, it's very convenient, isn't it? It's, you know, we're not that far from anywhere. I think that's what makes the opportunity for the show to be fantastic. Yeah, like we're, we're, we're kind of an hour and a half from Dublin or Cork. Or, you know, in all good roadways, so it's easy enough to get here. We're only like two miles off the main road, so. Perfect, and plenty of parking. Yeah, oh, there's, there's yeah. yeah. And for own parking. And just in relation to the actual venue we have here, as you can see, folks, we're inside Ned's cabin here, which is actually a shop. Um, as regards the venue, what, what's the venue got to offer here for, for people coming for the show? What's, you know, it's, it's unique, Peter, you know. It's the fact that the lake, it's, it's a big lake, you know. It's, it's not a small, a lot of shows, you know yourself from doing them over the years, you might have to have an indoor casting area that's quite small or... There might be something like a pond, but lots of room here, loads of room here for demo site. It's custom built, custom made really. Yeah. You put that many little yeah, access all around the lake and everything. It's perfect, perfect. Yeah, yeah it'd be nice to, for people involved to actually go out and be catching a few fishes as part of a demo. Of course, yeah. 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 And following on from last year, of course, last year was your first year in it. You know, big, big, not I would say big chance, but you know, you took a fair, a fair gamble yeah, hosting something. Yeah, but you know, you know, the feedback was just superb, to be honest with everyone involved, from the public to the traders to all the celeb demonstrators, all said they'd come back. So, you know, it was all very positive. They thought it was that, or the, a lot of the celebs commented on, on it that they thought it was a perfect venue for a show. And of course, it's very important to have some kind of an angling show in Ireland because it allows us to promote our sport, it allows people to demonstrate their gear, it allows us to suck in those young people and try and plant that seed for future generations. If we don't have events like this, well, then there is no other opportunity to, you know, to get out there and meet celebrity anglers oh, and all that kind of stuff. Techniques, Peter, you know as well. Techniques are changing week after week, month after month. Yeah. There's something new coming on all the time, and people want to see. And the likes of this show and the likes of this venue, it's just. It's made for so what can people look forward to when someone comes down here on the 29th of May what's, or 29th of April should I say um, what, what, what's the, without giving away too much now I know you have a few big surprises coming up but we don't want to give away too much folks but uh, what, can, what, can, what can the punters look forward to coming down here now and what, well, what's, one, what's, one little incentive for a, an early start is there'll be goodie bags for the first 50 people in the gate Lovely. that they'll be worth more than what they'll pay coming in with different bits of box for into your man. How many? How, where would you want to be in the queue, Ned? The first fifty. First fifty in. The first fifty in each. Remember year. that, folks. First fifty in the gates on Saturday and Sunday. Get a nice lucky bag. Um, yeah. Plus, there's, there's there's a lot of things in the pipeline. A lot of little secrets that we'll be letting out in the not too distant future. Um, keep your eyes and ears open. There's a couple of nice things that, uh, happening at the show and. Um, a couple of new things happening at the show, a couple of new celebrities, we have national and international, so keep your eyes and ears open. It's that's fantastic to hear. It just shows that after the first year, you know, work got out there and then people, you know, really found the show to be fantastic and that there's new people, new celebrities, new stands coming in and, um, you know, supporting the show, so it's fantastic to hear. Um, we can still expect, you know, last year, I was, I was part of the show and, and one of my highlights of the year last year was when I was doing my talks and demos. You know, it was a full house, like, and it was fantastic. You know, it's fantastic. So many people in this very room that we're in now, um, and and eager to learn and eager to, you know, to to get the information that we were given, and and that's again another big part of the show this year, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and, and like for anyone that's never tried their hand at fly casting or whatever, there's going to be loads of opportunities for for everything with demonstrations on pike and sea fishing, and we're going to have a big emphasis on on. Uh, Kids coming in and getting the chance to try a fly outside in, in the marquee and then come back onto the lake and catch fish and put on the fly and catch a fish on it. And who does who looks after that? Yeah, the the guys are helping out with the fly tying. Brilliant. 
and then Guy are doing the casting with kids on, on the league. So, so professionals are coming down yeah, here to, yeah, yeah. to coach the kids. That's fantastic, you know. And, and yeah, I, I remember meeting a few kids last year, and they were they were going around with smiles yeah, from ear to ear. Yeah. yeah, after trying to fly with Apgoy Ireland and then coming out casting with Gaia, yeah, and yeah. it was fantastic. Like so that's yeah, so that'd be brilliant. That'd be fantastic. Um, and the times, what 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 sort of time uh, is, a, is a day here? What time we open? What time yeah, we close? The, the car park will be open from nine o'clock, and the show opens at ten and, and runs until five both days. And secure private car market. Yeah, there'll, there'll be overnight security. There's there's secure fencing around the whole site, and there'll be security guards here around the clock. So right. everything will be very secure. Flight airs are all back. Yeah, everything bigger same time. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Bigger and better. Bigger and better. Fantastic. Yeah. Bigger and bigger. you get a chance to get a feed down here as well, folks. It was a great old. Great old feed to be had here last year as well during, during your day. And I think that was the one thing that really stuck out to me from last year's show, from, from any other show I think I've ever done. And I think the venue pays tribute to this, or this pays tribute to the venue, should I say, is that, you know, people come in in the morning and they were here all day because they went and saw their, their demonstrators on the lake. They went and saw the likes of Craig Barr, who's coming out from the UK again this year. You know, watch him do some buzzer still water tactics, then come in and listen to a, 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 a demo in here in the, in, the, in the seminar room. And then they could take their time and, and go through the trade stands if they wish, grab something to eat. And then by the time they've done all that, it's time to go back around again and catch the new demos. So that, that's all happening again this year. There's going to be a full schedule of... Anyone who's... More serious into their, their angling. I mean, there's top guys. Yeah. You know, almost all of last year's guys are coming back. I would think, which I suppose, as you said, you know, you're in business, Peter. Repeat business. I mean, if they're that happy to come back straight away. Absolutely. You know, on yeah. Sunday evening they were. Put my name down. Yeah, yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. that's a great that's a great sign for the show. And yeah. even, even saying that so, though, like even punters last year, people that might have had come to Nate before, that did come to the show. Mm. They brought their kids during the season after. That's yeah. Yeah, 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 that's brilliant. You know, I like that's that says it all. Really. Yeah, yeah. And you're starting up a whole new generation. The whole thing starting, which is that's what we want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you had everything in the in, in the fly fishing side. Sam Trout, yeah. Stephen Jones was here. Sea Trout, of course, Stephen. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. You know, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Everyone loved seeing it. Yeah, yeah. We, we actually, we all look forward yeah. to seeing yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. like seeing him. Even, yeah. 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 We've Henry Gilby yeah. again this year. Henry's back yeah. again. Henry yeah. was here last year. Had a great chat with Henry. Yeah, yeah. 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 was there. Yeah. Cormac was there from Wexford again. Yeah. yeah. We've, we've some other fast people we can't say yet are going to be involved right. in the show. Um, just to pipe demos, I mean, you know, yeah, watching, yeah. watching Stuart there casting those giant flies yeah. and the lads with those giant pike lures up in the, yeah. in what I suppose we might call the predator zone, up, up at the other end, and there was space to have yeah. so much going on, as you say. Guys came back the second day. You know, yeah, to see, to see, yeah. People came the second day, you know, they didn't yeah. get around. Yeah. They wanted to watch it again, so. Yeah. Know, that's, and like the fact that we are only come what? Not even ten minutes from the city. From Waterford from City. Waterford. Yeah. And yeah. like we lads we meet the lads in the hotel on the the, the, the Saturday night and the Morale performance coming back in the game again Sunday morning paying the money to come back in the game the second mm -hmm. day in a row. So World Champions Bay Casters. Yeah. With yourself. I think are you the current National Rivers? Yeah, I snuck an old, snuck an old national title there at my age. Yeah, got one off the young lads there, so I'll be here. I'll I'll have a, a demo on um River Nymphon. I think I'm down for the River Nymph and Tactics again this year, so that'll be good. But no, yeah, looking through the lineup there, it's, it's pretty impressive, all right. Um, and you're saying that there's, there's a few new there's a few, a few new, new big names coming in this year. In the coming yeah. weeks, so and that's going to be on your Facebook page? It'll be on the Facebook page and the website. Or coming Irish IrishSpringAnglingFair.com. You can yeah. see in the background there, folks. It's Make sure you keep an eye on that Facebook page. If anyone wants to buy tickets, up, they can now buy them online. Of course, there's a fantastic yeah. raffle going on, Ed, if you want to tell us... Yeah, what, what can people expect to win? Is, uh, uh, first prize is 700 euros worth of tackle of your own choice from, from my own shop here. Wow. Um, either fly or spin, whatever whatever you want. Okay. Uh, second prize is a 55 pound truss electric engine. Lovely. And there's other prizes then down the line. There's a third prize actually, a free day with pizza. pizza <laughs> river, yeah. And we so there you go. Yeah, I look forward to taking someone out. There's great prizes, so they can pick up the tickets online, Ned. Yeah, you can yeah. pick them up online or here in the shop. And you can also purchase the entry tickets online now if you want. Like, if you, It's 12 euros a day to come in, but if you can buy a two-day two ticket online for 20. 
Right. So if you want, if you're coming to two days, you can make. A and don't forget, folks, if you get in in the first fifty, you get your money back in your in your lucky bag. And under 14s are free. Under 14s yep. are free. Yes. That's it. So bring along the kids for the day. Yep. Great day out for the family, um, anglers and anglers to be. Um, all right, guys, look, that's brilliant. Thanks very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Look forward to the Irish Spring Angling Fair on the 29th to 30th of, of April and May this coming year. And uh, we'll let you get back to work. I know you have a lot of organising and planning to do. So uh, thanks for the time, and uh, we'll see you all in the near future. Thanks, Here we have it, folks. Great little chat there with Ned, Jason, and um, <clears throat> the lads there. <clears throat> the lads there down in Adair Springs. I hope you've enjoyed that little video. Uh, I managed to wrangle out a couple, couple of fish down there when I got down there. I had no flies done. I, I've done no stocky fishing, very little stocky fishing this year. And I got down there and I said, geez, I probably should have tied a few flies before I went down. I'd fake all with me. But uh, grand, get, grand to get a few hours. It was very cold there. Uh, that morning I did, I was freezing, I fished till about half 11, 12, and that's it, I just, I I, I wasn't ready for it at all, but, um, absolutely John, um, yeah, great old, great old venue, really looking forward to the show down there, as Ned said, don't forget, you can buy the tickets online, you can book your tickets online now for the Irish Spring Angle Fair by visiting www irishspringanglerfair.com um, also there's a great raffle on there at the moment say 700 euros worth of a, a tackle voucher for first prize it's a fair prize um, <laughs> I was freezing down there John I was freezing down there absolutely Richard Richard some great prizes great old show you know it's so important for us to have shows like this I suppose I, uh, <clears throat> for myself say you know, I run a small little business here very few opportunities to get out there and really show off my wares meet people face to face in the demos and go around, shake people's hands, and, and thank people for their, their, you know, their business and stuff like that, and their support. And it, these little shows gives us not a little show at all. Believe you me, it's, it's quite a big show. It's, it's things the biggest, the biggest angling show in Ireland now. And um, you know, to go around and meet the people at these shows and be able to show off what I do and talk to people about it face to face, it's so important for like some my little business, you know, and other businesses around the country. It's an Irish, it's an Irish. Uh, show it's you know it's all Irish dealers Irish exhibitors a lot of Irish fly tires you know so it's all it, it's great to have these events and it's so important we support them because we got so little opportunities not even just as traders but it's just general anglers to get a place to come and, and congregate and meet and have a chat and a greet, meet and greet and, and learn something new and pick up something new and so it's it's very important we support these little or these efforts from people like the Ned so well done Ned uh, you know fantastic um, fantastic show last year really looking forward to this year gonna be great like um absolutely kevin i sure did yeah i went into neds and got in beside the stove and, and warmed up eventually but anyway i've done a bit of fishing it was great crack down there going to do two more flies for you these are the other two streamer patterns that i would commonly fish i was fishing a little black streamer down there um stuart wiley's on there as well absolutely stuart yeah great to see you down there last year look forward to you coming back again this year uh look forward to everyone deserves a massive lineup folks it really is keep an eye on their facebook page keep an eye on their website and you'll see the lineup that's coming it, it's 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 exceptional um and that's a tribute to the show from last year that people are coming back and um really looking forward to it this year again so here i've got a size 12 streamer scary fly streamer hooking device going to do probably my best streamer from this year you fished it over leash angling center as well folks done quite well on the banks over there um robbie the leader i was using was 0 0.08 shogun that's what i was using 0 0.08 shogun um fishing under the bung and pulling the streamer um as you can see i had a bit of a crack off there as well um didn't edit, edit up them videos too much folks like to keep them fairly raw but um this was this was my best streamer so far this year the few days i have been out in different fisheries all around the side of ireland and um, this has been my number one fish uh, my number one i used it in, say in in leash for the leinster banks and done quite well on it i've used it down in neds a few times done really well on it um and it's it, it's a really simple but very effective fly um i think mark is on there did mark ask the question i see loads of people guessing numbers there mark did you ask a question and I'd say Mark didn't ask it on my stream. I think that happened once before with Dave. But anyway, Mark will keep an eye on it there. And he will let me know who's the winner. Uh, I think I know the question. Is how many fly tires were on fly tires row last year in Adair Springs? Which is not the same amount that's going to be there this year, folks. Because it's going to get bigger. And don't forget, Adair Springs, the Irish Spring Angler Fair, is not just about 
fly fishing. There is Henry Gilby's coming over there to talk bass lures and all that kind of stuff. You have uh, Jim Clossy, sea angler, coming there to do some demos uh, on, on, and talks on sea angling. There's um, there's a whole load of, of different um, type of angling being covered at that show. So it's not just for the fly angler. And I should really not be going on too much about the fly angler. But there, it's for everybody. You know, it's for everybody. What I've just added in there to the back of this hooks, folks, I've put my Kevlar on. And I've added a little bit of metallic gold dub in there by Hens. Okay? A little bit of metallic gold dubbing. And actually, one is probably enough. I wasn't really conscious. Normally, I double that over. And... Um, don't forget the winner of the quiz tonight will win a whole weekend, two weekend passes to the Irish Spring Angling Fair. Okay, that's the Saturday and the Sunday for two people uh, to the Irish Spring Angling Fair on um, the seventh. Uh... Great stuff, Adrian. Yeah, it is. It's a brilliant place. Yeah, yeah. Um, on the Saturday and the Sunday, you get to, you, you'll win two two free passes for the whole weekend. So you'll be able to catch all the shows, all the demos over the whole weekend. Um, here I'm going to add in a piece of monofilament. So I'm adding in a piece of 0.10 or 0.12 or whatever you have. That's that's fairly fine. It's not too heavy. But yeah, it needs to have strong enough to be able to put a bit of pressure on. Okay, going to add that in there. Lash it in well. The last thing you want to do is carry on with this fly. And next thing realise... Um, next thing realise that is... Um, it comes out when, when, you, when you need it. Okay, so we lashed it on. And we'll switch over now to our gold again. Back to our gold metallic dubbing by Hens. Really nice stuff to work with. I use a lot of silver as well for silver minkies and stuff like that. Short, do you not know the answer to that question? <laughs> I thought you would know the answer to that question, no short. So, just dubbing that on, as you can see, it dubs on quite easy, quite pleasantly. Dub that on, and I'm going to carry up that gold from the tail right up through the fly. Not a very over, sometimes people, when they're dressing flies like this, <laughs> given 8.5 but um sometimes um when people are dressing minkies and streamers and stuff like that they can dress them a little heavy you know i like to keep them slim if i'm using rabbit zonker i will cut it in half if most rabbit zonker you buy is either four mil or 2.5 mil i do tend to cut it in half but for this particular fly i'm using the pescari fly mink zonker that's the mink okay it's about two and a half mil wide lovely lovely material really clean fantastic when that gets wet and i use the olive the black and the white for all my minkies and my um and my my snakes and all that kind of stuff is eh, some movement in it a uh, really soft beautiful silky material and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take that the top of that and i'm going to tie it in there now as you can see when i tie in that minky i tie it in quite a bit back along the skin okay i don't tie it just right at the tip and i leave a little bit over the eye and that's fine i can clean that up afterwards but you want that there to get a real good tight grip on that skin and that minky strip um what i'll do then is i'll moisten my finger and thumb and i'll just start stroking back those fibers sticking up and that'll allow me now to work that monofilament rib the whole way up through that body real easy okay a lot easier than it would be if i was to um leave it dry and now i'm putting a bit of strain on that monofilament making sure everyone's really secure this is going to get hammered don't forget folks there's going to be Big rainbows and browns chasing this, pulling out his tail. This fly needs to be built strong. Okay. Now you can see why I said make sure that monofilm is well lashed in. The last thing you want to do is get your zonker strip tied in. After tying in the body, give that monofilm the pressure it needs to secure that whole fly together. And um, next thing, the monofilm gets pulled out. Okay. So make sure it's well tied in. And that way you're not trapping down any fibres there now either. Because I'm just working it up way through. Work it up there to where I had the tread. Mark Driver's on there as well. So James Hope, you had the correct answer. 18 fly tires at last year's show. Um, well done. Well done, James. I will get you your two tickets. I actually, James, I will get... Ned will actually be emailing you your free passes for the weekend. Congratulations. Trim off the waist, and at same, at the same time, I just trimmed off that bit of skin that was sticking out. And now I have a nice, strong... As you can see, Zonker sticking out the back. I haven't trimmed off the enemy Zonker just yet. No, Jonathan, I don't use gold wire. Uh, uh, hey, Dennis. Dennis Goulden's on with us there. Great to have you on, Dennis. Uh, De uh, no, I don't use gold wire. I always use monofilament for uh, ribbing my Zonkers. It's much stronger, far easier to use. And it doesn't, you know, leave any gaps in between because it's so fine. What I'm doing with that 
bit of gold now as I'm brushing now because I want that to come up a little bit onto the zonker strip as you can see and when that's wet that little flick going through the zonker is, is fantastic um, especially for a chasing fish um, you know he'll see that little bit of flick every now and again and might entice him just to, just to hit, a, hit a rattle but no I don't use gold wire I find that if I use the gold there will be little gaps in along the, the zonker strip so um, you're welcome James uh, great, looking forward to seeing you at the show again this year I know you had a great time there last year There's a, you know it's a great show for um, it is a great show for you know, families and younger people to come. You can tie a fly and then go out and catch a fish. It's fantastic. Now, there's a couple of ways I'll finish this fly. It depends on where I'm fishing and what way I'm fishing it. Sometimes I'll put on booby eyes there now. Sometimes I'll put on... I'll build up a head and I'll stick on actual realistic eyes. Sometimes I'll use little jungle cock cheeks. So I'm going to put in a little jungle cock cheek there. Um, You could crimp the tag in with a pliers to get a grip on the mono. You could, Kenneth, yeah, you could. So I'm going to put in two little jungle cock cheeks there for a moment with the Kevlar before I finish this fly. So it all depends. Normally, if I'm really into me, really fishing hard during the winter, I'll have all these flies in my box. And um, I'll have different kinds of heads for fishing, different kind of depths, and uh, depending on what way the fish want them. So I'll have jungle, ones with jungle cock, I'll have ones without it, I'll have ones with dumbbells, I'll have one. Hey Rob, Rob Redmond's on there from Wales, good to have you on with us Rob. Rob is tying in the British, British Fly Fair soon Rob, best look at that one. Um, we'll finish off that there now. Yeah, absolutely Declan, this, these work on rivers too. So I've got just two nice little jungle cock cheeks tucked in there nice and tidy. In on that, um, this has been an absolute belter of a fly for me this year. Um, now I'm going to take Tommy fly number 14. And I'm going to uh, colour in my head. Start it off. Tidy it up. Now some guys stripping streamers or stripping minkies. Because you know, I, I like to leave my minky tail long out the back. Because of the movement. And you can get an awful lot of uh, plucks and tumps on it and chasing fish. And that's fine. That's going to happen. You know, and as I said in the video there, you just got to keep pulling. You know, you just got to keep working your retrieve. If you go and strike at a little tump or a little pluck, until you feel that you're going to lose that fish, he's not going to follow it again. So, you know, when I get little plucks and taps, I keep going, I keep plucking, I keep streaming away or stripping away at whatever retrieve I'm using. And hopefully they lock on the next time they, they open their mouths at it. Um, but some guys fishing the lures and minkies and stuff like that will always fish hot heads because there's a chance to fish my target the hot head. Okay, or a hot bead. So sometimes that can work too. And once they target that, they're sure as hell going to get, to get up in the... In the they're sure as hell going to get snagged up in the... Hey, Dick Croak. Dick Croak is on with us there. From Moonkine. Hope you're keeping well, Dick. They're sure as hell going to get snagged up in the beach. So a little bit of lacquer. Just a little bit of... Lacquer. Give it all a bit of a coat around. Securing that thread. Everything's nice and strong. No, Mikey. He didn't get sacked. Risa took him out to dinner, would you believe? He's gone out to dinner with Risa and some of his family, Mikey. Uh, how did you get on a leash today, Mikey? I see a little video of your roly-poly up there in leash. Did you get a couple? You did? Uh, no, he didn't get the sack. Ah, we couldn't sack Dave. Jason and all, sure. Graham and all the lads would be fierce disappointed if we lost Dave. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my tail to length. Depends on the, the kind of length I want. Depend, depends on where I'm fishing or whatever else. So I'll always try to tend to cut a bit long. And just like I was explaining before with the, the bung. You know, you cut it a little bit longer. I can shorten it up if I want when I'm on the side of the lake. Okay. So I just get my scissors in there, in a long bit of skin, and give it a little nick. Now when I'm doing my zonkers, I like to fish them longish enough. So I will get plucks and stuff like that, but with practice, you'll, um, absolutely burn it. Um, with practice, you'll, uh, you can see the length of my tail. With practice, when fish start nipping at the butt of that, you know, I'll keep stripping, I won't change my retrieve. I'll, I'll be, you know, very strict with myself not to lift the rod. And just keep on stripping at the pace they want. If they're following it, there's a good chance they'll keep following it and they'll lock up the second time maybe, you know. Or sometimes they turn away and that's fine. You're not going to get them all, you know. But that, that has been my number one streamer this year so far on all lakes. It's absolutely so simple. But that bit of gold flash underneath, when you see the whole thing wet, and when that minky tail is flashing up and down like that, the trout are getting a look at that gold tail coming out. Sometimes I put a bit of UV in there as well instead of the gold. Um, thanks, John. 
Exactly, Mikey. Yeah, you're dead right. That's exactly what it is. He's getting the brownie points in before the 15th of February. So, you know, when when, the, when that tail is up and down on your retrieve, you know, that, that gold that gold um, undertail is showing. Sometimes I lose a bit of UV in there instead of gold. And, you know, it just, next thing a trout that's following it, and he gets shot at UV or shot at gold. It could just entice him to take it on. Uh, thanks, Stuart. Um, could entice him to take it on. Um, so there we have it, folks. So that's gone into the box there. Don't forget, if you've shared the stream or you stick in a comment, you're in for a chance to win tonight's flies. Last fly before we go for tonight. Another one. This one, I actually caught a fish on the air springs the la uh, on the video. And it was a black kind of lychee lure pattern, okay? Uh, I'm just get, gathering all the materials for this one here now. Not a complicated fly, but a very simple fly. But this thing is 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 just exceptional. Okay, if you're looking for hard caught rainbows um, that are difficult to catch, maybe overfished quite a bit with all your glamour stuff, with with all your bung material and your flashy stuff. Well, then this is the sort of stuff you have in the box for the end of the session, the end of your peg or the end of the day. Okay, I got a W size twelve SL to hackle hook there in the vice. And I just put a 3 mil black tungsten bead on there at the moment, okay? I'm going to take my Kevlar, Scary Fly Kevlar, and I'm going to throw that in there. Don't forget, folks, if you see any posts coming up over the near future about the Irish Spring Angling Fair, we'd all really appreciate it. All the traders and dealers and fly tires, you know, share it around a bit there and try and get a few people to come along. Um, it's going to be a great whole weekend on the 29th and 30th of, um, 29th and 30th of April. Hopefully we'll have a little bit of decent weather. We'll go fun. We're going to start off here with a little bit of olive. Marabou. I normally give it a little bit of a twist just to help me see the lint. Just, just barely pluck off the ends of them. Place it up. We've got a long tail on this one as well. Okay. Once I place it up, I give it a bit of a trim off. And then I pluck out the kind of loose material, the down off those stems and I tie them in there so I'm not bulking up the body the trick to tying this fly effectively is have a skinny body as possible okay done that I'm going to add in two strands of UV flash here so I got two strands there what everything's sticking to me now two strands in on top of that and you can just double them back over and leave them in, in kind of the middle, okay? The middle of the fly. Love it, John. Absolutely love it. I use the J voice. John was asking me what would I, what do I think of my J voice. Uh, absolutely love it, John. I, I wouldn't tie in another voice, to be quite honest. I've got so used to it now. Uh, yes, Kenneth, I also do that too. Yeah, traditional flies down in, especially at Dare Springs, the likes of a black and peacock spider will catch a fish down there. You know, black clink cameras, bibios. Um, all that kind of stuff will, will catch fish down there. Dialbacks work really well down there. You know, traditional stuff will work really well down there too. Um, especially when fish are really active. You know, when you go down the winter months, they mightn't be as active, but they, they certainly will work down there. Um, Kenneth, yeah. But uh, no, John, yeah, I love it. I, I, I bought my first J Vice second or third hand, and then um, I, I made myself a promise that if I passed my app, advanced app guy exams, I would treat myself to a new voice, and I, and, I, and I couldn't go away from the J, so I actually got one made for myself. Um, and I, yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. Jonathan Matches, you were trying to purchase a cape, was it? Um, so no problem. Plenty of orders coming in. Give us, a, give us a shout after the show, John, and, and I'll get you started out. A black marabou tail goes on top of the olive. Okay, I'll show you a picture of this full fly in a moment, folks. The tail is quite long. goes directly on top of the olive. And we're going to tie that in there as well. Make sure it's directly on top. So you have your little bit of UV in, in the centre. And using the Kevlar, get a real couple of real tight turns on that. And as you can see, I'm not coming back far on the hook. It's quite a short little body for the size of the... Um, for the size of... Um, <clears throat> Now, let me think about this next stage here. Um, okay, next stage is I'm going to tie this off for a second. Try and think exactly how I get this one done. I haven't tied this one in. You know, I had one in the box there the other day. And I'm going to switch it over then to some um, chartreuse tying thread. And I'm going to put a little chartreuse hotspot right there. And why do we put the hotspot there and not somewhere else? Is because if they target a hotspot, it's right beside the hook. And not putting a bead on it, 
just that hot spot okay and you can whip finish that off this fly is based on the Italian fly the Rocco anyone has ever seen me tie a Rocco before this is based on that fly I know I reintroduced my Kevlar you can give that a little shot of lacquer or a little shot of um, zap a gap that little hot spot there just to make sure it stays exactly where it needs to be now let me think okay now we're going to add in some black marabou again not quite as much as i had on the tail don't cut the ends off them and i just wet this one up for a minute because i want to keep it distinctive from the tail so if i put that in there dry and it all marries in around the tail it's, it's going to cause me a bit of hardship in a little while okay so what i do is i make sure and wet it so we'll just stand out and leave the, the natural tail ends, them ends there, on the actual piece of feather because um, it'll help it, you differentiate between the tail and what's going to be, that piece of material is going to be used for. We go back to our olive marabou. Just give it a little bit of a twist to get it all together. Tie, pluck off the real weaker parts of the tips and tie them in there. And tie them back as far as that hot spot. That'll do fine. Trap all the rest down. Now take your olive marabou and wind it up the body. Secure it off. Let the marabou stuck to the shed. Trim that away. Now you can catch the piece of black marabou that you tied in on. And we're going to take that straight up the top, like so. So they're basically the, the, the same colour combination coming off the tail comes up the body as you can see. Okay. And you can see how much that hot spot is sticking out at the butt. So if I was doing the red and white roco, it might be a pink hot spot there. If I was doing a whatever colour combination or hot spot changes, depending on the colour combination of your marabouts. Okay. Once we got up as far as there, I then have some or I should have some spectra dubbing. I do. A little bit of spectra number 45 by hens and we're going to tie that in there nice and tight there's a thorax in mind the bead so the whole thing about this fly even though there's quite a bit of work on it is keeping that body as slim as possible exactly like that a very simple little looking little fly but there's a few stages of tying it correctly to get it really right and as you can see the hot spot there sticking out beautifully in the oh, sticking out beautifully you got your olive underbody you got your little tiny bit of sparkle don't put in six or seven or ten strand sparkle it's two and doubling back um in that tail a little black bead and when you take it out of there and i'll get a tweezers here and then we'll have a look at the length of the tail we'll also have a look at the way our profile needs to be wet when that thing is coming through the water the movement in that is exceptional I mean, now you can see the little bit of glare. See, we don't need to add in any more than two. Any more than two, and there'll be two overpowering on that tail. But that thing coming through the water, being stripped at different paces and different, you know, figure of eights, snappy figure of eights and stuff like that. Um, you know, it is absolutely lethal. And you can do all sorts of combinations. It's based, say, on the Italian Rocco fly, very famous fly over in Italy for stock fish and wild fish. But um, your tail has got to be the length. You can see the length of that tail on that fly single strands of see how much they stick out once they're getting the black uh, really really good fly that really for for hard caught fish that's one of my go-to streamers even on rivers if i'm fishing a river in out abroad in um somewhere in Italy and they've got stocked fish thanks john thanks james thanks dennis uh for stocked fish and you know there's been a couple of guys through it already fishing the big iron streamers the blobs the fabs whatever maybe well and that'd be the sort of thing i'd put up straight away and you see the movement on that tail and keep it that slim you know there's only a small bit of marabou there keep it that slim that thing is just it's, it's electric coming through the water um, and fish just can't help themselves um so there we have it folks there's four kind of patterns that i would have with me going to leash or going to uh tank stewart um not going to leash going to adair uh most of the time 
bar last Sunday when they went down or during the week when they went down. Um, but there are four very effective patterns um, to work on the likes of Adair Springs and other fisheries all across the country. we got some fantastic fisheries across the country, you know, and it's not easy for them to survive. So um, do try and get out and support them in the last few winter months that's left. It's a long summer for them. And don't forget, folks, um, thanks, Bernard. Uh, thanks, Rory. Um, absolutely, Rory. Yeah, 100%. Sandy Hill pattern for salt. Absolutely. But um, don't forget, folks, the Irish Spring Angling Fair is on the 29th and 30th of April this year. You can book your tickets online at the www.irishspringanglingfair.com. Uh, it's going to be an absolute fantastic event. There's so many people coming already. Uh, fly tires, demonstrators, salt water, spinning, f the whole shebang. So, um, no, John, it surely wouldn't. So make sure, make sure you come on and uh, come along the weekend if you can make it to Saturday or Sunday I promise it'll be worth your while first 50 in the gate every day wins a very nice lucky bag um, so you'll get your money back on your lucky bag before you even set foot into anywhere and great demonstrations great jokes or great um, fly tires row and everything like that to come along and see for the weekend so do keep an eye on their Facebook page folks keep an eye on their uh, website and you'll see updates I know say John was put up today he was the first fly tire announced uh, I've seen the list I know who's coming I can't give it away Ned promised me not to give it away but um, it's it's going to be it's going to be a great show and really looking forward to meeting everyone down there so there we go folks I'm going to say goodnight to you I wish you all uh, have a great weekend enjoy the rest of your Saturday night thanks for watching as always huge thanks for all your support here in Sky Fly folks really do uh, it means a lot to us it keeps us going here every week so if you need any fly time fly fishing gear do check out www.skyfly.com or if you're stuck for any advice or information don't be afraid ever to pick up the phone we only love as you can all guess to talk about fly fishing so do pick up the phone give us a bell here and we'll do our best to help you out give you the best advice possible we can on gear or fishing or whatever you need okay so folks have a great weekend thanks for watching and i'll see you all next saturday night Next Saturday night, we're actually going to be fishing the Midland Lakes of Ireland. So next Saturday night, we're going to be tying flies for Loch Ool, Loch Ennell, Loch Sheelan. We're going to be talking to one of the best Loch-style anglers in the country. Uh, don't miss don't miss that show, folks. Watch out during the week. I'll have a post up on who he's going to be. But you don't want to miss next week's show. Half 8 Live right here at Piscari Fly. See you all then. Have a great weekend, folks.